what's more wholesome than taking a trip to the zoo? You get to be up close and personal with some amazing animals that you pretty much never get to see in the wild. Sure, you could fire up the newest Deep Look episode. They just celebrated their 100th episode. Congratulations to them. I see you Deep Look fans. Thank you for checking us out. But now imagine seeing cool critters and other exotic animals in person. Clearly, zoos are a win for people. But when it comes to the animals, I'll never forget when I asked my grandpa to take me to the zoo and he says, why would I want to see animals locked up in cages? And I thought to myself, dang, he might have just ruined my childhood. <laughs> nah, but seriously, in the long run, zoos might cause more harm than good. So today we're asking, should zoos exist? Humans have been capturing and displaying exotic animals for thousands of years. The earliest known collections date back to 3500 BCE in Egypt, where rulers kept hippos, elephants, baboons, and different species of large cats. Now, back then, that didn't mean that your average Egyptian could just go check out that awesomeness. These early zoos were just a way for kings to flex on other kings. Like, hey, I see you got those two lions over there, but check out this big hippo. Like, that's probably how it exactly happened. <laughs> Modern zoos, where the public can come and watch animals exhibiting their natural behavior, didn't really become a thing until the early 1800s. The longest continuously operating zoo in the world is the Vienna Zoo, which has been going strong for more than 260 years. Now that is impressive. Today in the United States alone, over 180 million people visit zoos and aquariums every year. I mean, it makes sense to me. Where else can you see polar bears and giraffes in the same place where you're eating cotton candy or a churro? Literally nowhere. There aren't churro stands in nature. They just don't exist. Because it's like I'm always eating churros in public spaces. So, <laughs> like, zoo, theme park, it doesn't matter. Find me fried dough and I'm in there. Zoos may be great entertainment, but their big goal is to educate the public about wildlife and what we can do to protect them. Zoo animals are sort of like the ambassadors for their counterparts in the wild. As the president of the animal welfare organization, American Humane said, people won't protect what they don't love and they can't love what they don't know. Which is a boss quote, that's a, that's a really good quote. <laughs> and there's some research to back that up. According to a study of 26 zoos published in Conservation Biology, zoo visitors increase their knowledge of different kinds of animals found throughout the world and learn specific actions to help protect those animals. Zoos also contribute to scientific research. Zoo is short for zoological park, and zoology is a scientific study of animal biology and behavior. And that's what zoos do. Over the last 20 years, zoos and aquariums have produced over 5,000 papers covering everything from disease transmission between animals and humans to the best ways to protect endangered species. In fact, zoos work really hard to save animals that are threatened in the wild. It's probably no surprise to you that modern life is putting a lot of pressure on habitats all over the world. Poaching, climate change, pollution. As all that stuff continues to ramp up, more and more species run the risk of becoming endangered or even extinct. Zoos can take at-risk animals, breed them in captivity, and then introduce them into the wild. This can save them from extinction by helping to restore their populations. Take the California condor. In 1982, there were only 22 of them living in the wild. Because of breeding programs at zoos in San Diego and in Los Angeles, there are now around 300 California condors flying free. We also have zoos to thank for still having bison, the black-footed ferret, the golden lion tamarind, and the red wolf. Still. Zoos have their problems. To begin with, not all zoos are created equal. Some are clean and well-staffed, others aren't. There are some in the richest cities in the world, and there are some in conflict zones. What this means is not all zoos have the resources to properly care for their animals. And for many critics, no amount of education or research justifies keeping animals captive. That captivity can be really bad for both physical and psychological health. If you've ever visited a zoo, you may have noticed the way some animals, especially large cats, tend to pace back and forth inside their cages. According to scientists, this behavior represents an attempt to cope with boredom and small enclosures. One study found that chimpanzees in captivity were significantly more likely to show signs of compromised mental health. Things like hair plucking, self-biting, and self-hitting. And researchers have known for years that elephants suffer serious health problems and die much younger than they would in the wild mostly due to a lack of exercise and high stress levels. And while zoos were crucial in helping save the California condor, success with other animal species is a big question mark. For example, most large carnivores like lions and tigers that are bred in captivity die when released into the wild. 
turns out that they haven't developed the natural behaviors they need when they're out on their own and have to fend for themselves. So at the end of the day, when it comes to zoos, I'm kind of like, eh. But it's not about my opinions, it's about y'all's opinions. So get down in those comments and let us know what you think. And if you stuck around this long, I'm going to assume that you like animals. So you should check out our other episode on whether endangered species are worth saving from extinction. And for all you teachers out there, get your students talking about this video on our website, KQED Learn. Till next time guys, I'm Miles Best, peace out.